Hi guys, Todd here. Uh, today I'm going to be having a look at something pretty special in my opinion. Uh, this is the SB23. It's a 23mm Genesis atomizer uh, with a, such a reduced chamber on it at the top, it's quite frightening. Uh, now I'm currently sitting on my crypto and I'm actually in 18650 kicked mode. Um, now before we get going, and I know I forgot to mention this at the end, I know I did. Um, one of the unique selling points about this is that you can turn the top cap, close off the air holes and effectively leave this lying down and it will not leak. It's not leak proof um, because if you leave it lying down on the air holes like that it will leak. Uh, but if you close the air holes off uh, and leave it sitting right side up, you know, nothing. The flavour on this thing, and I will say this many times to come as the video goes on, is stunning. <laughs> you will be sick to death of the word stunning by the end of this review. Um, now, you will have to go along to UK Vapors uh, to get a hold of this when it's released. Uh, the link will be in the description, the video description on YouTube. Uh, this is not a mass produced device, this is hand turned, um, made in very small numbers, it's not going to, the market will not get flooded with these. So hopefully by the time you've watched all of this, um, you'll go along to UK Vapors and get your name on the list for it. I'll say now there are some slight niggles with this, but the positives outweigh the little niggles. And that's just my take on it. Now I've broken this right down. Uh, there are a few bits and pieces to this. Uh, what I will tell you is that the height of the whole device, um, you know, is going to be 53mm, diameter of 23mm, and it weighs approximately 80 grams. Now we've got a Pyrex tank here. As I said, these parts here are all made of 316 stainless steel. Uh, the only things that aren't 316 stainless steel are the little bolts here. They are 304. Now, here we go. Here's the bottom section uh, of the tank. You've got a Pyrex tank that's going to sit inside here. To start this off, we have a brass centre post here which runs right through the middle of this piece here as I should be screwing this into here. Now you, you won't have to do this unless you want to break it down completely to clean it out. This uh, peak insulator that we've got here, uh, this is peak 1000. You can actually unscrew this altogether. It's threaded and it does come out. I'm just going to leave that in just now because the brass bolt runs through the middle and that gets screwed in and it screws into the bottom of here. So I'll just nip this up. The only thing you have to watch when you're tightening it up that uh, this piece here will start moving so you have to almost like hold on to it by a pair of pliers or just really tight with your fingers. Uh, I can usually get away with just holding it with my finger until I get this right in here. So this is adjustable, an adjustable 510. Once you've got that, that will screw into the bottom of here. Uh, first thing we want to do before that is actually pop in our Pyrex tank. Uh, you can see it's got a little o-ring here. Now what I've been doing is pushing the o-ring down to the bottom of the tank and then just pushing this in And most of the time, and it's not doing it now, is I find that when I'm pushing the tank in, it actually pushes that little o-ring down at the same time. If not, I just get a little my screwdriver or something like that, and I just poke that o-ring down. It just adds a bit of stability to the, the Pyrex tank. In fact, I'm not 100% sure if it's actually needed, but... I think it's more just a, 
an aid, you know, to stop the tank moving. And it does the job well. So there we go. Now I've got that in place. Take my top section and I'm just going to thread that in here like so. You can see you've got your O-rings in here. Just knit that up. And you see that my connector's sticking out just a wee bit too far there, so I'm just going to knit that up just a little bit more. And that'll do me fine. So here we go. Now this <laughs> this this looks complicated. Um, it's not really. Uh, we have two negative posts, two negative terminals here with the Allen keys in them. And uh, I've got my Allen key head here so I can just, you know, tighten them up and loosen them off. Uh, we've got a, a little bolt here, Allen key head, and then, you know, that's just going to go into the top of here, which is your live terminal. So, uh, what you would do is you've got your live and your two negatives here. And we've got two wick holes here. I make the wick holes to be out about 3.25 millimeters. So you would run this in dual wick configuration. So what are all the other holes for, you're asking? Well, this is where this bit comes in. What happens is once you have your wicks set up, you take this piece and that sits on top of there like so. You see you've got two air holes here. You then screw this down. I'll just pop these bolts in here just now. You've got a fill valve here. And that's an air release valve for when you're filling up. And, you know, you would just fill it up with juice. This is where your vapour will come out, out these two holes here. You would pop on your top cap. And that gives you adjustable airflow. And that is pretty much how this bad boy works. Now, I've been able to run this, uh, yes, I'll get shouted at here by some people. Uh, I've been running this with stainless steel mesh, stainless steel rope, and also with uh, microcoil cotton builds. Um, and it runs great with all of them. I can't fault it. Uh, not in that respect. There's no reason why you can't run this in single coil configuration, because you can just close one of the air holes off with the top cap. Uh, but uh, what I'll do is I've got some stainless steel rope here with little mesh booties at the top and I'm just going to slide them in there like so. Now I want to make sure that they're not too long uh, you know that they won't get uh, and they are, they're just a little bit on the long side. So all I've done is I've just tightened up the mesh a little bit so that I can slide it down through the hole. And there you go, you can see it there. I just want to try and keep it level with the top nut here so that when I put the cap on, you know, it's not going to crush anything. Um, now I'm going to do one wick at a time. And uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to play it with coils and whatnot, but we'll just, yeah, let's see what I can find. Right, I'm perfectly honest here, um, I am struggling doing this the, the standard way, if you like, of you know doing a dual coil, you know, doing one, wrapping it, I mean I've gone back to doing, putting one stainless steel mesh rope wick in there, coiling it, pulsing it, and I can't get rid of the top hot spots, um, and I, I'll, once again, I'm perfectly honest, I've had this for quite some time, well a few weeks, and uh, I've always struggled. Uh, so I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is just show you how to, basically the same, I'm just putting a couple of coils in using a little piece of metal rod like that, and I'm just going to build the coils first, pulse them, get the hot spots out, and then put the wick through the coils in place. Because just doing it the standard way, there's no insulation in the wick holes there. Uh, I, I just I can't get it done. I'm perfectly honest. Uh, hopefully you can see when I push the button here, 
you know, they're not heating up all evenly or anything like that. So I'm going to try compressing them and, and almost like go for the microcoil look. Now hopefully you can see, I'll just come in here, you can see my terrible coils. So these two little micro-ish coils, I've got a bit of rod or a drill bit or whatever, or whatever you can find. Same diameter as the hole and I just slid it in and, well I made my coil on this first and then just connected them up. Then pulsed them, tightened them up as you would any other micro coil and then I was able to just screw my stainless steel rope wick straight through and by using the you know the stainless steel mesh boots at the top here that's what uh, you know creates the kind of like tight contact there and hopefully I've just soaked these wicks now this is only coming out at 1.3, I've not done anything crazy daft here. So I take this piece here, and this is peak 1000, and I'm just going to take that and pop it over there, like so. And you can see you've got the two holes sitting slap bang in front of the wicks there. So I've got one bolt in there one bolt in there and I'm just going to tighten them down. Now this is where I have to admit to being a bit... <laughs> there is a little uh, spacer, uh, not spacer, but filler plug that fits in there uh, and I've lost it. I can't find it anywhere. Uh, so you've got, you can stick your nozzle of your bottle or a needle in here or here and fill away, but uh, and you've got one hole that equalises the pressure or lets the air out when you're filling up. Uh, but I don't know what I've done with it. <laughs> I really don't. I've lost it. Uh, unless I put it in the other box, I'm not sure. But uh, so I'm going to fill this up. For this, I'm going to use some of my Scopes Peach, which is a yummy flavour. So this should take four millijoules. And now all we've got to do is put the top cap on. Before we go any further, I'd just like to point out, this is a prototype. This is not the final version. The final version you'll have things like serial numbers and stuff like that. Um, you're looking at uh, two 2.5mm air holes there. And I'm just going to line top cap up like that. So I've got both holes wide open just now. And uh, you did a little drip tip for this as well. Uh, I'm currently sitting on the Crypto which is a 23mm mod in 18650 mod. Now I'll... <laughs> nothing hidden here. I personally found this incredibly hard to build dual coil using standard coiling techniques. You know just wrapping it up, uh, trying to get the hot spots out of one coil and wick and then putting another wick in, coiling that up and trying to get the hot... I, I never succeeded once. I, I just didn't. I spent... It took me back to when I first got the Cobra. The Cobra broke me uh, until I discovered the drill bit method and that is what basically I've had to do with this. I've had to use the drill bit method to use uh, to get my stainless steel wick mesh in. Now, once it's in there, once you build your coils, it's dead easy. Um, you know, it's just a case of, I, I've got a tutorial out there, just search for drill bit method and you'll find it. And once you find that, it is so easy after that. Um, that's just me. My, I'm not the best. I mean, I build coils every day and I'm still shit at it. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. I'm not the best out there by a long shot. Uh, but you are really going to have to want to do the drill bit method. Or you can also build this using cotton. Just do the micro coil setups. 
and uh, it works really well. You only have to put the cotton down a fraction into those wick holes, wick holes. don't over pack it and it vapes really well. Uh, I'm currently sitting on my Blue Tongue Woody in 18650 mode just now which is another 23mm mod uh, I was using the Crypto uh, but uh, I've not used the Woody yet so I thought I would take it out for a spin now I forgot to point out in the close ups and I should have shown you this hopefully you'll be able to see that the SB and the two serpents there Serpent's Breath which is where the, the name comes from. Uh, now, I want to point something out, you've got to be very careful with this, and the few times, four or five times I've rebuilt this using stainless steel. Um, make sure that when you put the insulating cap down, that the two wicks are not sitting right in the holes. You want them to be, make sure that when you cut the wicks, that you make they are sure they are below the height of the live terminal. Does that make sense? So you've got your live terminal sitting like that. Your wicks should be below the height of them on either side. If they're not, if they're sitting right slap bang in the air holes uh, that come out through the top, then you will inhale juice because, especially with stainless steel rope, because it wicks so well, you know, the juice will come out the two holes, so make sure the wicks aren't any higher than the live terminal and you will be fine. You will be absolutely fine. It's just something to be aware of. Uh, I remember the first time I built it um, with the stainless steel mesh wick rope, um, I was like, juice everywhere. And that's what it was. They were just too long. Now, I've been vaping with this with both air holes wide open because I've been really enjoying it. Um, take a vape. Now that is, uh, I mean like I said I'm in a, a 1.34 ohm build there, quite a high. I would have liked it lower. Um, but I do know I've had this down at 1 ohm uh, my cotton build and it was stunning, it really was, the vape was amazing and the vape is amazing out of this, is the, fla the flavour out of this is insane <laughs> it's just insane I, it's the big tick in the box for this thing the flavour that, the, the chamber that it sits in is microscopic uh, but you, because of the air holes you can still, I mean I can tighten it off and make a couple of tiny wee air holes and even then the flavour still stunning this is some bit of kit, it really is some bit of kit um, Right, start with the negatives in this. And I'm going to class this as a negative and a positive. Okay? Because th this is different for different people. For me, this is hand built, it's not mass produced. Uh, you know, it, he's turned this himself, and because of that, there are some slight imperfections here and there. It's not, I mean, on my one, the you know, the, the air holes are just off kilter a little bit to one another. They're not perfectly f f level. Just these little foibles just make it all the more appealing to me. If you had a device without an adjustable uh, 510 pin, then you might find it a little bit in the long side. Building it building it, if you're not using the drill bit method, you will struggle. You will struggle. So go and watch a tutorial for the drill bit method. Once you've got that, it's a doddle. Absolute doddle. So it, once again, that's a negative and a positive at the same time. The fact that I can run a really good build with cotton, uh, stainless steel rope or stainless steel mesh, uh, it works with all of them. 
uh, yeah the positives the huge positive on this has to be the vape the vape quality is stunning absolutely stunning um, <laughs> it's really good it's really good it's actually it's one of the most for a Genesis I think it's the most flavour I've had out of a Genesis to date um, the Diablo 1 was very similar but this is actually better than the Diablo 1 which is just weird um, he's really cracked on that the tank capacity is 4mm loads of juice in there it's a tall beast I mean it is um, and normally I would be a bit off put by the height of it but because of the, the juice capacity and as I said there's a few things that would normally put me off this device the fact it's made with Peak 1000 top end stuff 316 stainless steel uh, Pyrex tank now there's atties out there that cost a lot more but in my opinion for something that is hand turned and you're paying for somebody's time here I'm not trying to justify it I'm not I'm not you're either going to go for this or you're or you're not you're going to think sod that it's too expensive I'm not buying it or you're like me you think one guy built this one guy built this by hand and I'm paying for his time yeah I suppose another, well is it a negative? It might be to some, in fact it's 23mm, you know some folk do not have 23mm mods. Um, that, like I say, that may be a positive, may be a negative. Let's say that scope's peach in there and it is belting through. Just the flavour stunning. I can't say that any more times. I think I've said it too many times. I'll just say it one more time. Stunning. Uh, there you go. Right. I'm going to leave it at that. I think I've covered all the, the negatives and the positives. Um, I think if you manage to grab one of these, you will be very happy with it. As long as you master the drill bit method. Um, that's it for me. Uh, you know, Phil, I thank you for trusting me with this. Um, I feel kind of honoured uh, just to, you know, to get to play with this first. And, uh, you know, to everybody else that's been watching, I hope I didn't make too much of a balls up of this video. And uh, that's it. Thanks, guys. Uh, any questions, go along to UK Vapors and have a look for... Uh, Phil's thread on there. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description. We'll catch you later. Cheers now. Bye.